Shut up and sit down. Hi guys, Rick Pete here, uh, OWO for 19 European Champion. Uh, just a quick video. Um, I'm going to tie this one in. My friend Josh, who runs the OWO Fan 19 channel, is doing a SummerSlam prediction video. Um, I've already submitted a video to him uh, for his show. Um, this is just a quick video I'm going to do for my channel. Uh, basically, um, I'm going to go through the SummerSlam 2015 card and just discuss it a little bit. Um, predictions um, and you know some other little bits and bats um, so yeah without further ado crack on uh, Ziggler versus Rusev um, obviously the main backstory here uh, is Lana um, not the best backstory you know how many times has a woman been used um, to sort of bring heat between two guys um, but you know they've worked it out and you know Ziggler and Lana at least have a convincing chemistry um, on the screen um, I am a couple of weeks behind on Raw you know which shame on me but kids are off school so you know I've been busy uh, I'm gonna go my heart says Ziggler head says Rusev um, so yeah Rusev for that one um, Orton versus Sheamus um could go either way a uh, great little feud here um again too close to call um i'm gonna go sheamus for this one uh Orton got the last pay-per-view win so i'm gonna go sheamus for this one uh ryback big show mitts um wasn't a massive fan of ryback uh kind of sort of i wouldn't say i'm a fan of him now but i'll well i will say i don't dislike him as much as i did i still think he needs a lot of in-ring work on his moves uh, a lot of them still look very dangerous and very painful when he lands them um but yeah uh big show obviously depending what day it is depends whether his face or heel miz is just irritating um so i'm gonna go right back i'd like right back to win that one um you know give him a, a nice you know big way to cement himself as intercontinental championship you know a triple threat match against you know two former champions can't help but do uh, the big guy some good uh, owens versus cesaro and this match could quite easily tear the roof off the place um both guys go back to ring of honor together uh obviously with kevin steen and claudio castagnoli back then um so their paths have crossed before um both guys cesaro most recently getting a push owens was getting the, the push with the whole scene of feud um i have read don't know how true it is you know take everything you read with a pinch of salt that uh, there's a bit of backstage politics with owens that you know one of the guys further up uh, closer to vince is not a massive fan of him so you know whether that will affect this match or what but either way both guys will go out to tear the place up show everybody what they can do um i'm gonna go with cesaro although either way it's a win for me uh primetime players versus lost matadors versus versus lucha dragons versus new day um uh, i'd like to see primetime players retain or lucha dragons walk out new champions um matadors i think they're just in there just to add a, an extra team to it the, the fans seem very indifferent to them that's the opinion i get from what i see they don't get any cheers they don't really get booed it's, it's just there uh, new day i know they're supposed to be a heel team but good god seriously how annoying can you get um you know the, the whole positive message thing started off as a good idea but obviously wrestling fans are very fickle um yeah and we also have a memory wwe you know we won't forget that when they first turned up and they were preaching all this positivity jbl hated them for it and now they're a heel team obviously jbl has to sort of back the heels as you know that's his job as on commentary uh and he can't get enough of them but you know give us a bit of credit um 
you know, there's no explanation as to why he's changed his mind. It's just, oh, no, they're the best thing ever. No, sorry. So I'm going to go either primetime place to retain. I'd like to see Lucha Dragons win the titles. That would be great. Uh, just bring a whole new energy to the tag team division. Uh, team Bella versus Team Bad versus PCB. Uh, the Bellas need to just walk away from the business. I've said it before, I'll say it again, and I never get tired of saying it. Neither of them can wrestle. Neither of them can cut a decent promo. The whole thing with Nikki Bella doing press-ups and sit-ups and stuff in the ring. Oh, she thinks she is Scott Steiner. Um, it's ridiculous. Um, you know, they are proof, and I've said it before, and I will continue to say it, um, they are proof that it's not how much talent you've got, it's who you're married to or who you're seeing. You know, that neither of them are any good. They should just go. They're what makes women's wrestling wrong in the WWE. Get rid of people like the Bellas. You know, get rid of Nikki, Brie, and then rename it the women's division like they have on NXT. Because while ever you've got the Divas title wrapped around somebody who is a Diva and cannot wrestle, cannot cut a promo or anything like that, you're not doing your product any favours. Um, so I'm going to go Paige Charlotte and Becky Lynch for that one. Um, although it wouldn't surprise me if the Bellas don't win somehow with that twin magic. Although I have read Nikki's injured, so there is hope that if it was going to be two teams of two uh, from each team, that obviously they'll replace Nikki with Alicia Fox, and therefore Alicia Fox can be the fall girl for their team, which will probably lead on the Bellas teaming up on her. But uh, yeah, I'm going to go Paige Charlotte Becky. Uh, that's what I'd like to win. But it's WWE, and obviously the Bellas have got some clout backstage, so I won't be surprised if they don't scrape a win somehow. Uh, Stephen, Stephen Amell and Neville versus Stardust and King Barrett. Uh, on paper, obviously, you've got Stardust and Barrett, both full time wrestlers, um, versus Neville and the dude who plays Arrow. Um, it's very rare that a celebrity is booked to lose um, case in point Kevin Federline pinned John Cena you know I mean, what the hell was all that about um, I know uh, Stardust Cody Cody Rhodes it's Cody Rhodes I'm, I refuse to buy you know to play along with the gimmick um, has been uh, Stephen Amell on Twitter obviously social media is the best way for WWE to start storylines and keep them going now especially through Twitter um, like I say, I am behind on my Raw, so I've not actually seen Stephen Amell apparently appeared on Raw. Um, like I say, I've not seen it, but from what I've heard and what I've read, he actually made it quite a good accounting for himself. So, um, purely because of the fact that I can't stand Cody Rhodes, never have liked him, you know. Um, I didn't mind the status gimmick when it started, it was something new, it was something fresh, I thought it might take him in a different road, and I liked the gimmick. Um, but again, it's just, uh, no, it's it, it's just killed. It's, it's done for me. Uh, massive fan of King Barrett. Um, you know, unfortunately, he's been lumbered with Stardust as a partner. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to go Stephen Amell and Neville for this one. Uh, I hope that it'll win. Um, Bray Wyatt, sorry, and Luke Harper versus my boy Ambrose and Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns, sorry. Um, Bray Wyatt and the Wyatt family. I was a huge fan of them on NXT. Uh, huge fan when they moved to Raw. I was really, you know, excited. Uh, anybody who knows me from Facebook, you know, in the groups, I mean, will know how much I used to love the Wyatts. That changed very quickly. Um, WWE killed the Bray Wyatt character for me. Uh, caused himself a new face of fear, yet lost to The Undertaker at WrestleMania. Um, you know, so really, you're not the new face of fear, are you? You just, you know, um, the whole interfering in the, you know, money in the bank ladder match, costing Roman Reigns the, the bank. There was no backstory to it. It was just another example of creative being lazy. It's like, oh, you know what, Bray Wyatt's not doing out. Uh, Roman Reigns is getting a push, but you know the fans don't really seem to be taking to it because you know we've screwed up again by not jumping on it when everybody was behind. Uh, Roman Reigns, like at the Royal Rumble 2014 when it come down to him and Batista, all the fans were cheering for Roman Reigns, sorry, majority of the fans were cheering for Roman Reigns, Batista wins purely because he's mates with, you know, Triple H, so he got that, which obviously then led to the 
WrestleMania 30 match. Uh, so then WWE decide, oh, well, the fans like Roman Reigns, so then they start ramming him down people's throats. And now he ends up getting the same treatment as John Cena. It's no fault of his own. It's WWE fans, the fickle. I'm as guilty of it as anybody, you know. Um, case in point, Bray, Bray Wyatt, you know. Went from loving him to creative, just, you know, doing nothing with him, destroying him. So I've gone off him, just got bored of him. Just, you know, he, he does my head in. Um, and say so, the interfering in Roman Reigns becoming Mr. Money in the Bank. That would have made more sense than giving it to Sheamus. It's just my opinion. Uh, so I'm going to go for my boy Ambrose and Roman Reigns. Although it wouldn't surprise me if they don't give, uh, you know, White and Harper the victory. But I'm going to go Ambrose and Reigns. Uh, that's that's my choice. Um, Rollins versus Cena. Um, now. A lot of people hate John Cena um, purely because, as they say, as Josh quite rightly said in his latest, latest video, you know, oh, he wins everything, oh, he's buried this guy, oh, he's buried that guy. John Cena does what John Cena's told to. Um, he may get a little bit more sway backstage, but he's been in the company for years. He sells t shirts, you know, he does some, I mean, I, I know all of them do make a wish, but, you know, the facts can't lie, John Cena's done more Make-A-Wishes than anybody else. You know, he's some sick guy in kids wishes to meet John Cena. So, you know, the guy will go out of his way to do it if he can. You know, it. you can't fault him. Uh, he does what he's told to do in that ring. And I think he's had some of the best matches for a long time this year. And I know a lot of people will quite rightly argue that it takes a good opponent to make a good match. Cena's been lucky, he's had some great opponents. The matches he had with Kevin Owens were absolutely amazing. The best John Cena matches I've seen for a long time. I can't even give you a year when it lasts. I mean, I, I got as fed up with Cena as everybody else did. You know, it's oh God, not again, not even this champion again. Give somebody else a chance. You know, um, which is why I was happy that Roman Reigns got a bit of a push for the title. Oh, then Cena got the US title. Which I didn't mind because there was a good backstory, you know. He was representing America against the Russians, even though the Cold War's been over for years. But, you know, obviously there's always that backstory, America versus Russia. It goes back to Rocky IV. Um which played on the Cold War thing, but yeah. You know, I digress. So yeah, Rollins versus Cena. Uh massive fan of Seth Rollins. I think the guy's great. Um I don't know if he should have been given the WWE title as quick as he did, uh, but it made sense that he sold out to the authority. Oh, sold out. You know, he jumped to the authority in order to get this push. As uh, Paul Heyman, who is just a genius on the microphone, and I don't think anybody can argue that fact, you know, said, oh, you sold your soul for the short-term glory. Um, so for this one, it could be another great match. Um, I'm going to go Cena for the win, giving him back the WWE World Heavyweight title, which means he'll have to relinquish the US title, which then opens up, you know, for your Owens, your Cesaros and everybody else to start, you know, pushing for the US title. Now that Cena has given that title back some credibility, and he has, um, love him, hate him, you know, nobody can argue that John Cena has not made the US title valid again by doing the the whole defending it week in week out yet yeah, i know it's storyline it's scripted etc but you know the way he's you know done it he's personally made that belt look what it should have been all along you know and as a stepping stone up to bigger and better things like the intercontinental title is um so i'm going to go cena for that one um which would tie him with uh mick flair's 16 times world champion um which doesn't bother me uh i'm indifferent you know 16 times with rick flair it's a, it's a thing um you know it'll still be, always be a thing for flair 16 time world champ will you know ooh, but you know cena equals it better is it it's wrestling things happen the street got broken which leads me nicely to the undertaker and lesnar um now this one is gonna be um tough because Lesnar's 
on fire at the moment. You know, he destroyed the Undertaker at WrestleMania 30. There's obviously there's the concussion uh, stories. I don't know how true they are. Um, and he destroyed Cena when he took him to Suplex City. Um, but I think Lesnar might win this one. Um, I, like I say, I'm behind on Raw, so I watched the one where they had this split up fight and everybody got involved splitting them up backstage and uh, Lesnar got taken away in the, the like, zip thing, zip tie handcuffs uh, I saw that one uh, apparently this week they were in Brock's hometown, home state um, and again Undertaker popped up to spoil Lesnar's party and I've read that he low blood Lesnar again which is what he did the night he came back to Raw uh, sorry, on the, the pay-per-view he low blood Lesnar then which led to their fight on Raw. So, um, is, could this be a new new Undertaker, a new Attitude Undertaker? Uh, to me, when he came on Raw, it was on about how streaks are made to be broken, you know, what have you. And it, it seemed like he kind of accepted the fact that it was going to happen one day. And then when it did, he wasn't happy about it. Uh, it, just, it just flipped over completely in the same promo, saying that you know, it was inevitable, it was going to happen, they're not forever. But you broke my streak and I'm coming after you. That's why I cost you your title match and everything. So I'm going to go Lesnar. Um, but again, it's WWE and it's The Undertaker. Um, who knows how this one's going to play out. But my choice is going to be Lesnar for this one. So yeah, those are my SummerSlam predictions. Um, feel free to leave comments with your predictions. What you guys think is going to happen, uh, please like, um, subscribe if you'd like to. It would be much appreciated, excuse me. Um, and share my channel with your friends. You know, I'm trying to work on some new ideas for videos. If you guys have anything that you'd like to see, if I can do it, I will do it. You know, leave suggestions in the comments box um, about that too. Uh, so, yeah, that's my SummerSlam uh, 2015 prediction video. Um, so let's see how right I am this Sunday and hopefully um, it'll be as good a pay-per-view as it's starting to look on paper. Um, some great matches there, the possibility for some great matches. Like I say, I still think Owens and Cesaro is going to be the match to watch. And that could potentially be the one that blows the roof off the place. Um, so yeah, we'll find out on Sunday just exactly what's going to happen. So this is me saying bye for now and thanks for watching.